Hello, again, we're going to continue with the video. I decided to cut it short, uh, not to go through like uh, 25, 30 minutes, and it, that's how long it's going to take uh, for this complete thoughts uh, or test rather, or model uh, in order to be completed. So what I want you to know are uh, that we have to, after we cre uh, calculated the uh, centered moving average, which resulted into the orange line on the graph here or the chart, we need to account for the seasonable, season nality and irregularity those are the two terms if I could not pronounce them as I should uh, so how we're going to cal calculate or for the, or adjust for that is to take that actual data which is y in this case here and divide this is by the centered moving average so we're going to get here uh, let's take the very first piece of data before i could go ahead and drag the fill handle it's uh, 0 0.89 which means that our original data uh, which is the bl blue color is going to be 11 percent below this uh point here, the very first point on the orange line, which is the center moving average. If I do the next line, uh, point here, you will notice that this one here is above 11% uh, above the orange line, uh, the dot in the orange line. So probably you can figure that the rest in your own to see that the next one is 3% uh, above. This is a 3% below. This is 5% below. This is 7% above. Uh, and we're talking about here the uh, blue versus the orange line here. So these are actually the irregularity uh, and the season, uh, seasonality. And we have to really uh, adjust for those. So how are we going to do that? We're going to go and look for the seasonality by removing the irregularity. First of all, how are we going to do this? We're going to be looking at... Uh, calculating the average the average for all the quarters uh, quarter one all the point corresponding to quarter one. of course we don't have a point here for quarter one we don't have a point for quarter two but we don't we started right here so we're gonna uh, take the average of this point uh, this points and this point here we go okay the same thing we're gonna do for two this is uh, two 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 how are we going to do it quickly and efficiently uh, as you probably i'm going to go ahead and move that here a little bit we have four quarters that uh, just for the seasonal leaving the seasonality and leaving the irregularity then we'll take care of the seasonality by de seasonalized it uh, we're going to go ahead and say uh, average average of course i'm calculating the average average f if anything here, all the way to here, which I'm going to lock it because I'm going to be using for the two and uh, uh, by hitting F4, I'm going to be using it for the two and the three and the four. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one this here. That's the very first value. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, average these value. If you don't know how average F as a function work, look, the first thing is to feed it with the range and then feed it with the criteria, which is in this case is the one. Then you're going to be looking at the average range, which is those value that we're going to create an average. Hit the four in order to lock it because once we need to repeat the same thing over and over, there is a mistake here. So let's go ahead and see what we have made. Let me go ahead and see this one was not completely uh, uh, locked and let's see if the other one is completely locked so let's go ahead and do that uh, there is a division by zero okay let me go ahead and see uh, average f here we go this one here is basically right here hit the four and we're talking about this one here uh oh and do okay and we're going to go ahead and do this in this one here and so we're ready to go ahead and no 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 sorry i should not uh selected this one here i should selected this one i'm glad i made this mistake i want to leave it i don't want to really make sure that you understand here i'm looking at the wrong range because there is no one corresponding to that value so now we're going to get actually usually we get more than that but i have adjusted this only to uh to two digits to the right of the decimal point. So I like that one here. Very good. So now 
for everyone we'll see here, we're going to uh, put that here in order to get the season uh, adjusted. And every time we see two, every time we see three, we're going to put uh, this value. Every time we're going to see four, we're going to put this value. I could easily uh, uh, use an if statement. For four of them, it's going to be fine. But I could use also VLOOKUP function, uh, which is much easier. So VLOOKUP, look at this one here. Uh, and uh, if it's uh, within that range, which I have to lock, lock it also, give me the value corresponding to it, which is in column two, comma, and also give me the false exact. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And notice I ended up with getting this one here because that's one. And let's go ahead and do the rest for everyone. Very nice. So how are we going to go ahead and create? Uh, we get the seasonality by removing the regularity. So we're going to go ahead and do also the uh, uh, apply the de-seasonalize de to the data. So we'll be able to actually get to the trend. Once we get to the trend, we'll be able to go ahead and get to the forecast. Let's go ahead and see how we're going to do this. So in this case here, we're going to take the original data, which is the Y, and we're going to divide it by we're going to divide it by this one here, the seasonalized data. So we're going to go ahead and take this one here, all right, and divide that by this one here in order to get the, de here we go, this is the deseasonalized data, deseasonalized data, and click here, and I'll be able to obtain that very nicely. 